Hi, everyone, and welcome to the final episode. Christian, can you believe it's the final episode I, of season one I of Mondays with Mindy? It is the season finale. It's amazing. I mean, jump back, kiss ourselves. Yay. <laughs> yeah. We did it. Um, there is no way we could close out our first season without anyone other than my dear darling Marjorie Goobelman, also known as DJ Mad Marge. Only to the uninitiated. Is there anything surprising about the fact that this New York fashion and social A-lister is now also Queen B of DJs? Friends from London to New York and Paris to Los Angeles have always known that Marjorie is an avid music listener and lover with a background as a radio disc jockey. Hmm. From her boarding school days of making mixtapes to getting her broadcasting license and working as a DJ at the local station in college, Marjorie's sound is irresistible. And you can count on it to put a smile on your face and get you up on your feet. (laughs) That I can attest. She's opened for Cardi B, Katy Perry, Mary J. Blige, Rita Ora, and Liam Payne, among others. (laughs) She has DJed for fashion shows, including Dolce & Gabbana, Versace, and Tori Burch, as well as for events for Bergdorf Goodman, W Magazine, Clinique, and Saks Fifth Avenue. She's been profiled personally and for her events in the Wall Street Journal, Vanity Fair, Town and Country, Vogue Mexico, and Women's Wear Daily. Her latest amazing gig is as the in-house DJ for Today with Hoda and Jenna on NBC. Wow. Impressive. The woman's going places. Yeah. (laughs) To say the least. Yeah, to say the least, right? Marjorie is also known as a society hostess and influential tastemaker. She served as chair or committee member for such organizations as the New York Botanical Garden, Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center, the Museum of Modern Art, Mm -hmm. AMFAR, and God's Love We Deliver, Wow! among many others. Let me tell you, the woman's generosity knows no boundaries. Um, She is a front row regular at fashion shows, and I can say that being invited to sit around her dining room table for a Sunday brunch remains the, I will say my, (laughs) coveted invite. (laughs) She and her son Cyrus live on the Upper East Side in New York City, and they are as kind-hearted as they are fabulous. That's pretty amazing. Shall we Mm -hmm. meet her? Are we ready? (laughs) I don't know if anyone's ever ready, but yes. (laughs) Ladies and gentlemen, it is our pleasure to welcome to the show DJ Mad Marge, Marjorie Goebelman. (laughs) Welcome. I am so happy. So, so, so happy you joined us. Um, so we're going to start, uh, the episode the way we start each episode with my Jonathan Adler secrets canister and Christian and I kind of just came up with 20 questions, random. We just start, we ask five just to get everybody excited and ready. All right. Yes, exactly. So who is your celebrity pass? In other words, what celebrity do you want in that bed of yours? If you could choose anybody. Just one? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, I love you. I mean, oh, that, you actually, that's choices. so mean. Don't make me pick one. Okay, give me choices. Give me your entourage. Your celebrity. Oh cat. my God. It just depends on the day. <laughs> Who is it today? I mean, right now. I mean do, can we have an age range? I mean, I go all over the map. Oh, do it. I mean, mm. sometimes I like George Clooney, mm-hmm. then I like Drake. I do mm-hmm. like music musicians. I, you know, I think s- rock stars are so sexy. Yeah. I mean, I like Lenny Kravitz. Um, oh, yeah. I just, I said something about like tattoos and on a stage. I don't know. That just, you know, naughty. Mm. That, go- that, yeah, that, that does it for me. Um, oh, Duran Duran still, my 14 year old self. I'm in oh. love with them all. Oh, that's a good one too. Yeah. Uh, yeah okay (laughs) next question yes ma'am what do you splurge on so many things (laughs) um experiences as i got older i realized that that i like to spend money on experiences rather than items when i was young Mm. i wanted things i wanted car or clothes or jewels and the older i got i realized i like trips so Mm. now i yeah. I like to ex- I like experiences. I like vacations, but obviously, given the coronavirus, um, that isn't really happening. But I'm <laughs> well, not really buying it. Any- I'm not really buying anything right now. <laughs> it will again, and I yeah. want to travel. Yes. I want to go on one trip with you. Yeah, I love trips. Least. Trips, trips are just there's something about them, and memories mm-hmm. are priceless. Whereas yeah. stuff, you realize 
as you get older, that stuff isn't really so meaningful. Agreed. I would agree. Yeah. Who is your favorite relative and why? My mother. That was a quick My answer. mom. And well, you know why? Because I took me to get older to appreciate her. When I was young, mm. she mortified me. She was absolutely, <laughs> I was that, she's wild and naughty and very inappropriate. And she was that mother that swore, told dirty jokes. She would, I'd come home from school and all my friends would be at my house. Um, she always had horrendous boyfriends. She <laughs> she would do the worst thing. She would have strange jobs. She was, I was mortified. She'd moved to weird towns. Like I'd be living in England. She'd live in Wyoming. She'd have a cowboy as a boyfriend. And I was sort of stuck up living in England. I'd be like, you're driving a pickup truck? <laughs> I was like, my, my luggage has to go in the open air. I was so snobby <laughs> and and I was so insecure. And I was like, mom. And then we'd go into some like saloon with those like white opening doors. And then everyone knew and people knew her in there. And I was at that age where I was mortified. I'm like, what? Yeah. And, and her boyfriend was like in a Marlboro ad. He was like hot and he was my age and I was embarrassed. <laughs> now I look back, I'm like, my, my mom is awesome. She oh my incredible. God, a girl. She taught me everything. I can cook, clean, run a house. I'm brave. I can read a map. I could go anywhere in the world. I can be lost. I'm friends with every nationality. I am everything because of that woman. Hmm. And that woman, she had lost both her parents before she got married. She taught me how to be happy. She taught me how to be a mom. All, everything came from her. But yeah. I didn't realize that until I got there. Hmm. And I can look back and it's her. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, I love that. And it's not yeah. late because she's still with us. And, and she's jamming. fun. Oh, and so she's fun. fun. I and love naughty. Oh. She's so naughty. She's the naughtiest. <laughs> well, I love that. But I love how and, you know, she's from sort of, and not to be gross, but she's from a sort of fancy Washington debutante family, which in your stereotype of stereotype of mine, you would put in a, a that would be a certain way. No, she would like ride a moped she went to florence she dated like way inappropriate men she sends the sickest jokes she's filthy. she's amazing and so i love to have that because i think it burst the bubble in that stereotype which so many people have and she also taught me to be polite to everybody to say please and thank you to everybody you are not better than anyone right. you can eat peanut butter and jelly in the kitchen and marjorie Goodwin, get your shit together you know what i mean like it, it yeah. she was a great mom Awesome. I love that when you've been doing your Marge Madnesses uh, for yes. Instagram and then on Twitch, I love how all of your friends comment to her and she comments right back. And there is this love for her. Yes. Genuine love for her. Because she's sort of one of them and she she's in there. I mean, she's in it and she's 79 and she's probably like, <laughs> And I'm going to share something with you. And my mom is actually in Florida right now and she's actually undergoing chemotherapy and oh, she doesn't I'm tell sorry. anyone that. No, it's okay. You know, my mom's really brave, but she doesn't yeah. tell anyone. She, and like the waspy can... way is you just get on with it and you just pull up your britches and you go to the doctor and you just take an Uber and you just do it. Hmm. And she's in there and they're like IG live. And like probably the next day she's off with like an IV. <laughs> like she's, and she's like in there like, you know, telling like a dirty joke. Like, no, she's amazing. She's amazing. I love Trooper. that. Well, I really yeah. love her because I too, I do treat me like I respect that. I, it, totally. I love 100%. that. I gotta say. She also, like years ago, she had like a double knee replacement and she did not tell my brother or me. And then she sent like a, put, put a photo of her knees on Facebook and she said, bye-bye. <laughs> and then, and people thought we were the worst children. They were like, you're not with your mother right now. I'm like, she didn't tell us. Amazing. Um, she didn't, she didn't, she didn't want a bedside vigil. She right. was like, what are you going to do? Stare at me? She's like, I'm fine. I'm like, I'm on my crutch. And she was like bossing the nurses around, whatever. But <laughs> she doesn't, she's very like, you must live your life. Yeah. And I respect that. And yes. that's why yeah. I think she's a great mother and launching your children, I think is very important. And she taught me to do that from her, her actions. And I think having being raised like that has taught me so much about how important that is. Hmm. Okay, well, I have to say, being on the periphery, very periphery of your life, but in there. Yeah, you're not in the periphery, you're gotta, in it. I got to throw in. I have to say that I have physically and viscerally watched you do that with Cyrus uh, for the last couple of years, and it's gorgeous. 
not only to watch, but your relationship with him. I mean, I, I do feel a book coming. I, I, I wouldn't <laughs> mind Marjorie mothering. No, you laugh. You, you shake your head, but you, um, maybe not a lawsuit. <laughs> no, <I don't. laughs> but um, it's translated, kiddo. It's translated from your well. I mean, sure. thank you. And, and parenting is really hard. I mean, there's no guidebook. I mean, you don't know what the you're doing when this thing comes in the hospital. You're like, oh my god, what is going on here? Yeah. Um, but you do the best that you can. But I really, you know, New York, the mothers are a little freaky, mm-hmm. and there's and they sort of would like to put their kid back in their womb. And I don't believe in that at all. Mm. You know, I operate on the what if I go out tomorrow and get hit by a cab. You've taught your kid nothing. Yeah. You know, they need to learn about life and get usually, out there and get on. Usually with it. kids like that, like like how you've been raising Cyrus, do not have what he also has, which is totally comfortable to sit with your friends, manners. Yeah. Like he's yes. got it both. He's yes. got it all. He's got it both. That shows my education. Um, no, we, yeah. I know. We, I, speak, I speak Mindy. Don't worry. You should hear the things that come out of my mouth. Or you should see my <laughs> typing and my grammar. Horrendous. I mean, I did read Cliff Notes. I'm not, I probably haven't learned anything since the eighth grade, so don't worry. <laughs> All right. Um, among your friends, what are you best known for? Um, loyalty. Oh, I love I that. Can to that and privacy. You are, oh, yeah. Like I call myself the vault, you are the vault squared, kiddo. Well, I will always show up for them. And, and, you know, I, I really believe that your word and your reputation is everything. And there are two things you can't get back. I agree. And I think they're so important and I don't take either of them lightly. Well, and it serves you as a creative too. Cause I just think that's also your currency as a creative. What you, yeah. All right. Last question before we like do a deep dive. Ooh, Marjorie Goobelman, what scares you? Being old and poor. <laughs> Okay, first of all, you never be poor. <laughs> it's not going to happen. Okay, and and uh, you have too many people who love you and won't let that happen. You also have a work ethic like no other. Yeah. Old, I can't help you with, except you're going to look fabulous. No, but I wouldn't want. I wouldn't want to depend on anyone. I think that, mm. that. I think that's more more deeper than what I just said. You know, I I, I would like I to, to take care of myself. I think the scary part is to have to rely on somebody and have to ask. I don't want. Wouldn't want to do that. Yeah. yeah, same. Agree with that. Oh, my yeah. God. I'm my pride. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So uh, I I don't know if you know this at this point, but um, the reason Christian and I started this was that during COVID, the one thing I really, really missed more than anything else was connecting to creatives and connecting to my people. And yeah. um, so I wanted to talk to my favorite ones and ones that have, um, to me, are the bravest and live it out loud and unabashedly, and you are one of those. And so having said that, um, this trajectory you have made from, uh, I mean, you've always worked, you've always, yeah. and, and, and you've always been involved in committees of some kind, and you, you're a doer, but this uh, phenomenal career as a DJ. What is that? I mean, it was a complete joke. I mean, it just came out of <laughs> nowhere, you guys. No, I know, but it just didn't start like this, you guys. I mean, it was I, really, it was kind of magical. Tell, tell and a, and a fluke, a fluke. Let's be honest. Well, I do have to say there's a level of talent involved. There's a personality that's involved. There's a work right. ethic, as I said, that's involved. I mean, it's not out of. I mean, I'm not a technical genius. Thank you so much for saying the talent. I mean, I think it's the sum of all parts. I yeah. mean, I am not the youngest. I do show up in a fancy dress. I play songs that everyone wants to hear of the people that we know or that I'm playing for. I'm not playing techno or rap or whatever. I'm playing, you know, good old tracks, no remix. I mean, you know, I'm on time because I'm a business person. And, you know, again, my word and my reputation mean everything. Often when I get a job, I get a repeat job, which is important. Yeah. Um, And I wasn't trying to do this and I wasn't trying to fit into a niche, but there was a niche for that because there wasn't anyone really doing that. No, not at all. And playing the And people missed hearing the songs that they actually knew. And they didn't know that. They're like, oh, wait, I love love that song. Woo. Well, yes. somebody famously yes. said that like luck is just a uh, preparation meeting opportunity. So that's, you were, I was lucky. Yeah. You were prepared. And it was the right time. Yeah. You know, I was old enough that I didn't care. <laughs> and I was like, let's just do it. Yeah. 
Yeah, and you were willing and to try was, it. You did a deep dive. I was willing sure. to try it. And I'd, I'd been a DJ in my teens and college. And right. I think in those other awkward years, when the years when I was like embarrassed by my mother and different years when I was married, divorced, I, you know, that you, you get caught up in what you think sounds right or looks right or DJ wasn't in that sort of in the box. And in my 40s, I was like, screw it. Let's do it. Yeah. Well, and- I know you talk about it as, I mean, and it, it was uh, serendipitous. I'm going to say, I'm not going to say fluke. Yeah. Serendipitous, right place, right yeah. time. But I love that your other life before DJing totally embraced this new Mad March, this deep yes. Mad March. Like they have been right behind you. The best. I mean, it's really They rare. were right there with me the whole way showing up and they were more, so supportive. I was worse. I was doubter of myself worse than my, my friends and my family have been such cheerleaders and I was more of a doubter of myself. Mm-hmm. And then, then I just went with it. Once I realized it was really happening, I accepted it. You know, if you sit at a dinner in New York, I don't know about in California, in New York, People are, it's considered rude in other places, but they go, so what do you do? Um, yeah. And so I never said DJ for a long time because I was scared it was going to end, right? <laughs> so I'm like, la, 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 I don't know. And then now, you know, now I own it. Good. Um, but, you know, because when you, it's like, you know, it's, it's like a diet. I mean, believe me, I go on so many diets and then I have a macaroni and pe- cheese a few days later. So you don't say you're going on a diet. So I was like, the DJ thing was that. I was like, okay, well. And then once it became real, then, you know, because I was having fun when you have fun and you like it and it's your job, you, it's, you're scared it's going to end. I think that's the fear. It leads to the, being the in-house DJ of today with Hoda and Jenna. Excuse me. I'm sorry. I I literally, I literally had a vocalization scream and a little (laughs) proper jig. I I Uh, thought you and me both star status. I was. So I was, that was, I mean, I was, I was really honored. I was like, this is not, I pinched myself. It's so correct. It's so right. You are the three of you, like it's everything about it is. Yeah. It's amazing. Honestly, I go there and I'm sad when they're like, it's over. It's time to go home. I'm like, what? (laughs) It's, and you have to get up early. I'm an early bird anyway. I'm like so excited when I get there. I love TV land. It's fun. I love all the people there. I mean, there are all these people behind, like the nurses and the this and the, I love it. I just, I love it. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah, it's amazing. It's it is. amazing. True. Yeah. So tell me what uh, currently, who, who or what inspires you uh, right now besides Cyrus, unless you want to talk about Cyrus, but. No, I mean, no, I, I don't want to be one of those parents. Like my child inspires me. I think that's, that just sounds a bit corny. Um, I don't really know what's inspiring. I mean, right now, I mean, I think there's a lot of weird things going on in the world. So there's a lot of different things that are inspiring me. Um, I mean, I think honestly, what's inspiring me is Mm -hmm. like teenagers a little bit, because I feel like the youth of today are making a huge impact. I'm proud of them. I mean, I'm these, I mean, when I read the other day that they had you know, the teenagers had bought out the tickets at the um, the rally at Tulsa. Yes, I was so proud that the you, you know, when I was a teenager, we were smoking marble lights on the bushes. We were, you know, we were- <laughs> well, especially because the teenagers, you know, we've been talking about them as being this generation that like aren't go getters, aren't, right. you know, expect everything to be handed to them. And Lazy. here, yeah, like, the full step up. Yeah. yeah. They were engaged. Yeah. yeah. And I don't think are going to stop, I hope. Yeah, and I clever. Don't think yeah, and clever. It's they like, are. No, they're know, clever. Thinking outside of the box. And they're listening. Yeah, thankfully. Yeah, and they want to do things for the better, I think. Yeah. I think they're going to be better than us, and we were better than our parents. And I, I, yeah. I have faith in them. Yeah. I, I'm, I have a good feeling about I too. the next Everyone generation. I really do. I'm terminally optimistic. Maybe so. Yeah. I do too, Marjorie. I, I, I do. do. Maybe yeah. It makes me sort of like, I, I got a bit of goosebumps. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I want to ask you that looking back, I don't like to classify things as failures, but, yeah. but is there a, a, a period of time that you look back and go, okay, but I came out stronger the other side. What was that time? And what did, Oh my God, there's so many of those. Right. No, no, I think that's a really good question. I mean, I do Thank think, 
Yeah, I don't think that that's a bad thing to ask at all. I, I'm a believer that if you don't look back in your life and cringe or go, oh my God, what was I doing? I don't think you've grown. Agreed. And oh, well, I have, right look, first of all, whether it's like, what the hell was I wearing or what did I say? I mean, I've said and looked and done some of the dumbest things. And at the time, I didn't realize it. So, I mean, first of all, I forgive myself. I'm not like, I love that. You know, that's fine. Uh, you know, that's what I what I was doing at the time. But I mean, I first of all, I would talk to like any old journalist to give some dumb quote half the time, and I'm like, what was I thinking? <laughs> I mean, I have a mouth on me and yeah. an opinion, yes. and it would always end up being like a pull quote too. It would always be like the one big woo, <laughs> and Marjorie Goodwin. I'm like, oh my oh, god. god. And I can't even say it was someone else saying it. No, no, no. It was me. Um, it's fine. It's all fine. I own it. Um, as you get older, you, you calm down a bit. Yeah. Um, the 90s, I, look, I was living in London. Mm -hmm. I was definitely, I didn't really know how to blow dry my hair very well. Um, the visualization was a little much. I embraced a little too much Versace. Um, <laughs> there was some, a lot of Medusas going on. I was um, on the... Not on the skinnier side, not that I am now, but it was definitely not meshing with the body. Oh, God, um, that so was done little, that. Oh. Uh, that was a little, that was a little, little much. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, there's been some moments in my past. Um, <laughs> you know, my married years. Yeah. Um, the bet, you know, but I had my beautiful son. Yeah. You know, yeah. out of everything bad comes something good. You have to look at it like that. Yeah. Can't get I, rainbows I, I rainbow. do, but it, it, but I, it also helps to like hear other people say it. Yeah, absolutely. And I don't blame it. I did all of those things. It was me. I mean, I hate people that blame it's them. No, yeah. that was me, <laughs> but it's okay. And right. I, I look, and I'm 51 and I'm okay with it. And I, I'm having a great time now. Yeah. And maybe I was a moron some of those other times. Well, that's okay. Yeah. Right. That's part of how I got to where I am now. Absolutely. Well, I do have to say that's also where your bravery comes in. You you talked about it as one of your traits that you have that's most admirable. And I love it too because I it resonates with me. But also you don't just talk about it. You do. You do it. You live like that. You live very Thanks, much Mandy. out loud. But also with such a sense I find of taste and decorum. Um, at the same time, you too can tell a dirty joke and have a mouth like a sailor at times. But I just, yes. it's one of the reasons that I brag to everyone. It's part of, you know, what I said in the intro that, you know, the covet invi coveted invitation, and I should say my coveted invitation is your Sunday brunches because um, you are so, you're such a sharer of things, people, and like you said, experiences. Um, I don't know. I, I really love that about you. Well, I appreciate that. And I love you. But I really think it's important. I like to share and I like to share my friends. And I love you because you're the same. Mm -hmm. Not a lot of other people are like that. And um, the older I get, I think it's really important to own your behavior. Mm -hmm. And it's okay to screw up. Yeah. Right. And be like, yeah, I did that. I said that, whatever. And I think people that don't I can't worry about them, but you know, I had, I had a very cool grandmother. My father's mother was also very naughty oh, and, awesome. and abroad and, a, and abroad. abroad. She was abroad. And, and she, but she was also very, so had Moxie. Fancy. she was a grand okay. lady, but she was naughty and she used the F word and she was funny. And she would like have like a vodka on the rocks at like 1159 AM. <laughs> and she, you know, she she'd always kiss men on the lips. I mean, she was wild. And she it. told me once, she said, tell it, say it about yourself before anyone else hmm. and then there's no story ditto very yeah. true so like you know what you were puking on the road in eighth grade so i guess what you know last night i was puking on the side of the road once you've said it you've diffused the whole thing yeah yeah, yeah. if you're like you know what i was searching for my handkerchief and i couldn't <laughs> find it then they're like you know what marjorie last night was puking on the side <laughs> of the road but she said she was looking for her handkerchief right. you know what i mean <laughs> <laughs> Right. Oh, so brilliant. Yes. Right? Yes. Exactly. Oh my Just God. I still it. might have to steal that at some point in my life. Oh, I have to, to say. steal it. Yeah. To please steal it. And it's fine. Oh my exactly. God, so good. Well, you see people on those interviews when they try and trick them. Just say it. Then it's gone. Yeah. 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 Diffuse it. I diffuse it. Yeah. I mean, back to the friend thing for a moment, only because um, one of the reasons that I fell madly in love with you so quickly was that I come from a small family, a, a 
yeah. tight family, but, yeah. but we're small. And I've always, I mean, since I was a teenager, like my family of friends is as important to me and I treat it like, I treat them like family members and vice yeah. versa. And I, um, and, uh, and I, your, your family of friends are amazing. And I have had Ditto. the privilege of, of stalking your family of friends and going <laughs> right up to them and name dropping you immediately and seeing the reaction I get. <laughs> so I would like you to know that I have seen how close your family of friends are and I love, I love that about you. Well, it's ditto. It's right back at you because I. It's the same thing. Um, yeah. Okay. So as you can see, Christian, it's a little mutual admiration society. But I love this. Happening. I mean, you're literally both just saying how important it is to share your friends, and truly, Sarah. that was a very that was part of the impetus of this podcast. Was right. you know not just uh, a way to express our creativity when Mindy and I were talking. It was like, well, how else do we get some of these incredible stories out to the public because they're there's meaning for them. You know, there's, there's something special to be said about it. So we started with a laundry list of, you know, Mindy's friends and we're like, let's, top, let's, top 10. let's see if they'll, if they'll do it, you know, and thankfully yeah. everyone, including also, you, they're you know, all doing it. Yeah. They're all doing it. Yeah. You know, your, your press, it's not been nothing, uh, the coverage of your events, but I don't think people realize what doesn't come across and can't the person. No, the press is more grand. And it, I mean, right. don't get me wrong. That sometimes that's nice, but it doesn't, it's not the person really. Hmm. It's not the Sunday lunch. Right. 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 Yeah. But I do have to say. Um, it's not the human. The human doesn't come through sometimes. Right. And you're. you're it, it's a, more la di da. Hmm. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's what, that's usually what press likes. Yeah. They like that side more and they would rather write about that. Right. Well, and you're, a, a lot of your gigs are incredibly high profile. Yeah, people in companies. But you know what? They don't want. They don't, they don't really care about like Ty Curry in the dining room and telling a dirty joke. <laughs> but you know I do, I mean? of course. <laughs> and your chocolate cake. Thanks for playing. Yum! I know. Oh my gosh, mm. so amazing. And like me saying, you know what? I'm on three spanks right now. Right? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yes. Um, I like that no. there's a good juxtaposition. You've got the high profile press and the big jobs, but then you can still tell a dirty joke and brag about your spanks. Of course. It's I mean, also Martin, if, if I ever lose that, just shoot me. No, that you, means that I'm not being myself. You won't ever lose that. You know, Marjorie yeah. will greet you if she greets you, because usually she's like running around doing 10 different <laughs> things. But, um, you know, fully frocked, gorgeous, you know, and and you walk in and it's, you know, you think, oh, my gosh, we're going to have I'm going to have to mind my manners. And within the first five minutes, like, <laughs> everyone's literally like spitting. They're laughing so hard. Yeah. Like that was my, my entree into Marjorie. Yeah. It's mm. kind of amazing. Um, by the way, so we've decided um, yeah. that um, since we don't have a sponsor, I thought I would take yes. this opportunity to um, say that we've decided that this episode of Mondays with Mindy is being sponsored yeah. by madmarge.com. You are one oh, click fabulous. away from hearing some of DJ Mad Marge's best mixes or joining her high profile clients and making it on the exclusive list of people and companies who hire her to make their events unforgettable. Everyone needs to attend a Mad Marge madness in their life at least once. But I assure you, once will not be enough. <laughs> Thank you. You're that is kiddo. a very, very hard sponsor to get, by the way. Mm. <laughs> I've heard very, very. They're very picky on who they sponsor. And uh, I'll piggyback off Mindy and say that to our listeners and our viewers Ooh, out there, um, head to mondayswithmindy.com. You can find all the ways to connect with us on every major podcast network. You can also check us out on YouTube if you'd like to see the show. If you like what you're seeing, leave a comment, give us a thumbs up, hit the bell to subscribe. Um, and also we will have show notes that tell you all about Marjorie. You'll be able to get to her website that Mindy just mentioned. Yeah. You'll be able to hear some of the music that she mixes and plays, uh, connect with her on Instagram and connect with her other ways. So Head to mondayswithmindy.com after the show and check out more information about Mad Marge. Thank you, guys. Of course. <laughs> please. This is like not only what we do, but it's like my greatest <laughs> pleasure. It also makes me feel like a voiceover artist again. It makes me very happy <laughs> to do an ad. You're a very expensive voiceover artist. We don't That's forget right. that. That's right. That voice is one of a kind. Truly. Thanks, lovey. Um, love you. Love you. Um, does where you grew up um, has that influenced your taste level, aesthetic experience, or did it's you move away from it? 
No. So I grew up in many different places and it definitely, it definitely influenced a lot about who I am. So I was born in New York and I moved to England when I was two um, until when I was 12. And I think that was a really amazing experience because First of all, I think living in different places and having to make different friends is important. Yeah. Um, living in Europe in the in the seventies was great. We lived actually in the countryside of England, and um, uh, like in a field. Like you know, my to school was like a three mile drive. Um, and, you know, you'd say I'm going to see my neighbor, and the neighbor was like you know four fields away. Wow. Um, and I had horses and rabbits and you know canaries and dogs and cats, and um, it was amazing. And I think that was a really great childhood. Um, and my English roots was, my father was a race car driver then, mm -hmm. and it was it was a great, great childhood. Then I moved to Palm Beach, Florida, which was like culture shock. I it mean, was like I've been in the, that is I nuts. Know, I you know. You were in London it, proper, so you really went no, through. No, I was in like the sticks. Hmm. Um, and then... Um, and then I moved to Palm Beach where you went, every house is next to each other and there's no, they, there's no, no one has a garden. It's like hedge house, hedge house, hedge, maybe, maybe a little bit of like turf. Um, and that was my first sort of entree into, I remember a girl saying to me, well, do you have a polo shirt? And I had no idea what it was. And I had a full English accent. And I went home like, mommy, mommy, a girl asked me if I didn't have a polo shirt. And um, she's like, oh my God, what have I brought you to? Um, and I didn't know because in England back then, no one knew what that was. Right. Um, and it wasn't defined by stuff at that age. Yeah. And you're 13 uh, and years old, right? Right. But, you know, in England, on the other side, I was like listening to Adam and the Ants. I was smoking cigarettes. I was naughty. English kids were naughty. <sighs> so I was I smoking that. in the bushes. I rode my pony. I smoked. And I listened to like wild music. I had all this English music. So that's where I got my like English music. I'd smoke. I inhaled. I was naughty. <laughs> but I didn't I didn't know what a polo shirt was. Like so there was pros and cons. Okay? Were you were you a naughty kid in Palm Beach? Did that did that follow you or were you a good girl oh, for a while? So oh no. So Every single one of my friends from Palm Beach, I started in seventh grade. They all come on the Instagram live now. My friend Su Suzanne they Strasser, know. she's there every time. Suzanne, so she will tell all of you that I was, Marjorie was the first person that. And then it was <laughs> dot, dot, dot. cigarettes, everything, everything, because I was the ringleader. I was a nightmare, the naughtiest. Uh, it kept going. Hmm. Wow. I, I will I will leave that to your imagination. Oh, but, no. Um, I, I've heard hey, stories. Correct. Oh, you know, we don't hide them. And and the people will type them and, you know, we, we talk about them, you know, in the Instagram lives and and um, Twitch lives. And the, those same friends I'm friends with to this day. And um, yeah, so it was still, so it was fun. Um, but it started in England, the naughty, the naughty continued. But what happened was I was the corrupter. <laughs> nice, nice. Little yeah, power great. Position. And then, Great. And then I used to like push my mother's car to the driveway <laughs> when I was in eighth grade and drive around Palm Beach when I was 14. I mean, you know, I was a nightmare. And mom now is like, oh, I knew the whole time. I'm like, she's like, but I thought you were having fun. I'm like, oh my God. Oh my God. Um, but you did, anyway, was, you did decide too. to escape the moment you could when you went to college. I mean, you did not want to stay in Florida. I'm no. So I went to boarding school actually yeah. for 10th, 11th and 12th grade. Cause in, in, in places like Palm Beach, there is no like high school Real, as yeah. such. So everyone goes up north to okay. school. So like, um, and I loved my boarding school. I, mean, I had a blast, and um, I don't think I learned one thing. But I'm still. I have. <laughs> it was fantastic. I mean, we escaped. We went to Georgetown in New York every weekend, and Amazing. we're we're not in the library, and um, <laughs> and it was fun. But and how did you decide to? get your license and become a DJ? I mean, how? That was in college. So then I went to college and that was a whole other thing. So when I was at that boarding school, not getting the best of grades, I remember the college um, counselor. Oh. So back then, just to give you a little context, my parents, I don't know if this was normal or not, but none of my friends' parents, no one went on college tours. No one, we, we took ourselves. Like we decided where we were going. And I remember this college counselor, she was like, I think you need to have a backup. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, oh. oh. I was like, oh. So she's like, oh, there's this one school um, that you should, and it was like in New Hampshire. And so I like checked the list of I applied. And that day in March when all the letters yep. came in, I got in nowhere except for the backup. <sighs> 
And I was like, oh my God. So she obviously knew that I was like a terrible fitness center. <laughs> so I remember my friend Helen from California, we were, we both only got into that one school and we were like, oh. so we-, we Oh my God, that, just, you, that you had someone there that was a, a miracle. Yeah, so we, but we flew, I just turned 18 and we could rent a car. We flew to Boston and we rented a car because I remember I had my license to go re- be able to rent from Avis. And mm-hmm. we drove <laughs> and we toured the school and we went to the town and I remember had a flashing light, a pub, a Chinese restaurant, a bong shop. Oh my. God. And that was the college town. And we both went into like a bed and breakfast that night. We were like, we don't want to go to school. <laughs> and we ended up. We were, like, and we we're like, at least we'll have each other. And I'm like, I don't want to go here. And I mean, my, I wore black. I was like a city slicker. I like smoked my cigarettes. I wore Madonna. I was like, I want to go to New York. I want to go to clubs. I like, you know, would get my hair blown out. I was like, I don't want to be in this New Hampshire place. And then I'm like, oh, but me and Helen, we'll at least go there together. I get home and like Helen called me. She's like, I got my grandmother to get me into BU. I'm like, what? I'm like, that, that wasn't the deal. We're supposed to be together. <laughs> anyway, so fast forward, I end up at this school by myself. It's like the summer, August. I'm in Newport, Rhode Island with my mother. Again, like so preppy. I have this pink and green luggage. I'm like, hey, mom, time for college. <laughs> she looks at me and she's like, well, Marjorie. You've already been in boarding school. You get the map out. You're going to take yourself. Amazing. I, she, she didn't even take me. Amazing. I drove myself five hours with my car, got the map, and took myself to college. Wow. I mean, she, yeah. Wow. That I is mean, insanely unusual. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Yes. I was like, I was like, toodles. Amazing. Confident. She was there. confident. She was like, to, to, good riddance. Anyway, <laughs> um, <laughs> I got there and. I think that was my first taste of the real world. Yeah. I've been in a bubble because yeah. boarding school, you're very padded. Everyone exactly. is like, you know, in this padded bubble. Um, and I get there and I'm like, my roommate had, was like, had like pictures of the doors on her side of the room. And like, we, we never even spoke hardly. We had nothing in common. I'm like, I got to get out of this town. What am I doing here? I had a radio station. And I'd always been obsessed with music, always. Yes. And it was a very de- deadhead school. Everyone was into the Grateful Dead. Oh, like they God. Would, they would they would answer the phone and speak Grateful Dead lingo to each other, like verses from the songs. They'd go, hey now, hey now. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm not in spirit. And they'd, they wore like patchouli, this Grateful Dead like sort of perfume. And they were tie dyes. I mean, I was in my black and my Madonna bracelets and I was smoking my Marlboros and I was in my Audi. I thought I was so cool. I did not fit in, okay? Let's be honest. One of us was not like the other. Yes, yes, the dull so thought of reality. Did, hello. So then they had this radio station and I was always into my music. I'm like, hmm, I could get on that radio. So I went marching down. I'm like, hello, how do you get on this radio? And they're like, well, you have to pass your broadcasting test. And actually I did it. I, I did, did I make like a public service announcement. I did all these things and I actually passed. I was going to say like, it's not nothing though. It was not easy. And you know, I wasn't Mrs. Student, but I actually <laughs> wanted it and I did it. And they said, Marjorie, you have passed, and we are going to give you a show every Thursday from three to six. And that was like a really good slot. And um, but they're like, you need a DJ name, and I'm like, okay. And I'm like, and it, every, back then you had like a version of your name, and I right. said, okay, it's Mad Marge, and that was 1987. Wow. And I had my show every Thursday from three to six, and I played my music. I did not play Grateful Dead. I played like The <laughs> Cure, all this. Amazing. I was into new wave music yeah, at the time, and that's all I played. And I. I talked to myself on a microphone alone in a basement. I told jokes to myself <laughs> and actually people really listened. It was funny. My I show believe became it. A thing. And I was like, ha, 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 all by myself. On my phone. <laughs> what I, was, I mean, I, I was a total nut job and I loved it. I really loved being on that radio and I played my, my, my music. I didn't play theirs. And I told mm-hmm. my silly stories and laughed to myself. And then they had a campus in England and oh. I, Yes. And this was how a whole everything okay. happens for a reason. Right. Yeah. When people say, you know, it all, everything turns out how it's meant to be. And I remember going into that little office in that weird town and I was like, hi, I want to go to your campus in England. And they were like, well, you need to have a 2.0. I didn't even have a 2.0. Marjorie. I, was like, a, I was pathetic. Okay. <laughs> but I, schmoo- I schmoozed the lady Marjorie there it style. Is. Thank you. Marjorie got to England. <laughs> yes. Good. And that's where, and I mean, yeah. I Mrs. Mean. like Betty in the office. She's like, okay, dear. And I get to England in the fall and I loved it so much. They had a campus. It was 200 students. Oh. I was supposed to be there a semester. Wow. I stayed 
a graduate. I ended up with like a A minus average. I loved it. I was you found your people in your time. place. I found my yeah. people. <clears throat> I stayed living there for another four years. And yeah, I, it, huge was like, it took me back to my childhood. Yeah. Um, then I met a whole other set of friends that I'm still friends with to this day. All my friends from the Middle East. Yes, who also come on to the Mad who March Madness. There. Who I, I've who met them through there. there. So I'm, correct. So when I'm like, Kuwait is here, Doha is here, it. all of that. And they're all still there and we're all still friends. And that was that for me was another yeah. very important and an educational piece of my life because right. I think that the world can be so divisive mm. and people can be so judgmental based on where you're from. Mm -hmm. And I learned firsthand by being friends and living in dorms for three years with some of my greatest friends from all over the world right. and learning about cultures firsthand and right. not through history books or through parents making judgmental remarks. Mm. Right. And so I can absolutely get in drag out fights with people being like, you don't know. You have no idea what you're talking about. I do the same you thing can... because I yep. there was a huge Persian, which we now yes. call Iran, Iranian contingency yeah. to Los Angeles. And I, you know, uh, I had a learning curve too. And I am the yes. first to just say, to know these people and this culture, you would not say half the things you're saying right now. Yes. <clears throat> it's the most rich culture most well-educated, beautiful yes. people. <laughs> yes. You know? And listen, every single culture. I mean, Americans, yes, we have that. people that we are mortified. True and that. that are absolutely, that we would not want to even claim. Yes. And they do too. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Exactly. And so I, um, I consider myself so lucky that I have friends, like one of my closest friends who's in the live all the time, Minnie, she's from Yemen. Uh -huh. And we met when I was 18 and she was 17 and we're still friends to this day, 30 whatever years later. And Love I it. think to myself, how many people in New York even know someone, and like they're on the banned list, that like Yemen can't even come to America, right? <laughs> right. I mean, oh. Minnie is like the most, she looks like a supermodel and she's like, she's the most chic, beautiful, you know, has houses that are, you know, that put museums to shame. I bet. Yeah. Um, but like, w you don't even know where that is, right. you know? And I, I mean, so I met all of these amazing people through that part of my life and I'm still friends with them to this day. Yeah. And, and I you go travel to, you there know, when you can. I travel, I, of I, course. Yeah. And I've gone to all their weddings and then some of their kids end up in Boston at school they come and stay with me and of Love course it. I'm like just go out just I'm not telling your parents you know? <laughs> <laughs> and that was a great that for me was another great education and it taught me so much and I feel like England is very good for that and yeah one of the great things about England is a gentleman is a gentleman no matter where you're from and America mm. actually doesn't have that American is yes. more segregated like that and I give Europe kudos for that because they don't put you in a box right they let you as people. Hmm. And I really admire them for that. Um, and religion and race and, and country doesn't come in. It's like, right. it's it's kind of a beautiful thing over there. Yeah. And oh, I have friends right now. now from, we do need that. And so I was very grateful to have that firsthand at such a young age. I was just going to say young and formative. So it's like it's in you. Yeah. So I moved to New York when I was 25, having mm -hmm. spent 17 years there, really, which is a long time yes. as an American. And so my cultural knowledge was so strong. And that was something that you can't get in any classroom. Nope. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. It's a beauty of, beauty of travel. You are truly like a gift to me a gift to everyone that you touch. I adore you. Thank you so much for doing this episode of Mondays with Mindy. I, I uh, truly. What, let's do Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Oh, oh my Monday. God. I, I truly <laughs> can't wait. Um, thank and you. What about all your movies? I'm so impressed with you, lady. Listen, I keep going, chugging away. This is what I do. It's who I am. And I think if you live it long enough, people start to pick up. Like, oh, <laughs> are you kidding? You should hire her. I can't wait to be blabbing about the latest one. I don't think I'm taking my notes down on my Thanks, ne next lovely. Twitch. We're going to be talking about it. Nice. Thanks, Lovey, And I nice. can't wait. Thank you for the music I got you. and your generosity um, and your spirit. And um, I love that you will be my friend for the rest of my life. It makes me very happy. I feel very lucky. percent. Yeah. You're yeah. stuck with me like a barnacle on a boat. <laughs> love it. I'll take it. And thank, thank you, so you much. Christian. You are the most tech savvy person I ever met. Oh. I'm glad. <laughs> I'm glad I have your phone number. Guess what? <laughs> no, he, Call me. he is the man, literally. Me. Yeah. Poor Christian. Be afraid. It's, oh, no. Like you, you with music, it's what I love. It's like people are like, you like to fix computers? Yeah. I'm like, I. Oh, my I, God. It's his crap. I, oh my love God. I know. Yeah. Yeah. Gets well, my brain thank going. you guys so much. Thank I can't you. wait to. I can't wait to be listening. I love you too. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye. She's great, isn't she?
She's amazing. Such a good energy. And what a fun story. Like growing up, I would have never expected any of that. But I love that you picked up on that energy because that truly is why she makes the most amazing DJ for these parties yeah. and because her energy is so contagious and yeah, um, you don't expect it from someone who looks like she does. And when she puts her little right. Oscar de la Renta dress on and her, you know, fabulous, <laughs> you know, earrings from Sotheby's and turns right. out this music and is jamming back there. I mean, it is a sight like no other. It's an she, event. She's it's, an it's original. It's not just a party. Yeah. It's an event. And she's yeah. an original. Truly. And she's addictive. I love that she has continuously reinvented herself with like the same idea, like, oh, this works. Let's try it again. Oh, this worked really well. Let's try it again. And is just seeing the results. I also love how she identified as brave because I don't think a yeah. lot of people, especially women, kind of claim and live I agree. Bra- bravely. And um, I, agree. I really respect her for that and love her for that. Me too. Yeah. No, this was a this was a great episode. I really hope that our our listeners and our viewers enjoyed it. Again, reminding them they can check it out at mondayswithmindy.com. Click to subscribe through any of the podcast uh, networks. You can also go to YouTube. You can subscribe there. You can leave comments. You can give us a thumbs up if you like what you're seeing and hearing. Hit the bell to be alerted whenever a new episode comes out. We try to release our episodes every Monday at 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. And uh, we will have show notes up about Marjorie. So if you guys want to connect with her, want to learn a little bit more about her or would like to follow her on her journey, that information will be on the website as well. And we look forward to seeing you next time. So Christian, I want At, to yes. uh, thank you for, we are officially finished with our first season. First season. Yes. I was literally like, we'll see you next week. And I'm like, no, wait, this is our finale right now. We're actually going to take a couple of weeks break until we, you know, two yeah. to three weeks before we reassemble and uh, relaunch uh, for season two, but I want to thank you, yeah. my friend. This has been a kick in the pants and I say more and again. Yeah, absolutely. I'm like, yes, please. And more. Great. I'm <laughs> glad we're on the awesome. same page as we always are, <laughs> as we tend to be. Yeah. Um, but well done, my friend. Thank you so much. Yeah. Same to you. Thank you very much for all your help and everything you've done. Yes. The best is yet to come kids. Bye everybody.